everybody. Welcome into the Shelby County High School football show. We're out here at Pelham High School to get you geared up for another busy and exciting week of high school football action across Shelby County. And right here at Pelham High School, our game of the week is going to take place Thursday night as the Panthers, who just finished practice here a few minutes ago, are going to play host to Benjamin Russell in what's become a key and important game uh, with a lot of region implications on the line in this matchup in Class 6A Region 3. It's become one of the more entertaining, difficult, and challenging regions in the state this season, especially when it comes to just getting into the playoffs. Everything's still up for grabs out of this region, whether it uh, be the region title itself, a home field advantage for one of those top two teams, as well as the top four teams and playoff spots coming out of the region as well. So this game right here between Pelham and Benjamin Russell going to play a, a big role and factor into determining how this region is going to unfold at the end of the year. And we're getting down to the nitty gritty now. We've got uh, four weeks left in the regular season, but only three weeks of region play left. Some teams only two games left in region play. So plenty still to decide over these next couple of weeks, but Time is winding down, and that Pelham game, one of two that we're going to have on Thursday night this week, the Thompson Warriors are going to play host to Oak Mountain on Thursday night as well in a Class 7A Region 3 showdown. We're going to talk about both of those games at the top of the show, then we're going to talk about all of the rest of the games that we have going on this week. We're going to have three county battles this week, region play back in full swing, so a lot of excitement to get to. We're going to jump right in. We're going to start right here with our game of the week between Pelham and Benjamin Russell. This is the first of an important two-week stretch for the Pelham Panthers as they get Benjamin Russell right here on their home field Thursday night. A little bit less time to prepare, obviously, playing a day early this week, but this is a game they know how important it's going to be when it comes down to possibly just making the playoffs, but if they want any shot of winning a region championship, you look at these next two weeks and how key they're going to be for the Panthers, uh, the momentum, the hunger, the desire that they're going to have to play with in these next two games. It starts this Thursday with Benjamin Russell, and then you've got a rival in Homewood the week after that. So an important two-week stretch where if you win both of those games, all of a sudden you look up and you're sitting atop the region in the region standings with a chance to win a region title. Um, and if you lose both of those games, you're in a situation where in that final week of region play, you're battling to get into the playoffs. So that's just how wide open Class 6A Region 3 is right now, how important this game's going to be on Thursday night for both of these teams, and both have shown a lot of positive signs or playing really good football at this point in time. So you look at this matchup and break it down, Benjamin Russell's innings, entering this game sitting at 5-1 and one overall in the season, playing great football in their only loss, a tight 31-24 to loss to Homewood, who sits atop the region standings right now. So a very good football team entering this matchup in a very physical group, played great defensively all season long. Uh, and you look at that, giving up just 14.3 points per game on that side of the ball to pair with an offense that's scoring 35.8 points per game. You look at them on the offensive side, they're scoring they've scored 41 or more in 3 of 6 games so far including 46 and 48 points the last 2 weeks in a row. So this is a team that's clicking offensively, obviously has been consistent on the defensive side of the ball giving up 14.3 so far this season, entering off a shutout of Chilton County, thir uh, 48 to nothing last week, and that's a, a Chilton County team that's solid. It's an improved team this year compared to years past. Uh, so you look at that, and, and you've got a successful Benjamin Russell team that's going to be very confident coming into this football game on Thursday night. But man, this is a scrappy Pelham football team. Just judging from what we've seen so far this season, they're sitting at 3-3 three and three overall in the season, but this is a team that could very easily be sitting at 6-0. and oh. They've lost all three games this season by a combined 15 points. So what that tells you is that they're competing in every game. Even though they've got three losses, they lost two of those by four points. They lost the other one uh, by seven points in overtime. And you look at those first two losses of the season, first year under head coach Mike Vickery, and those came in the first two games of the season against the solid Jackson Olin team against the 7A Oak Mountain team. Lose both of those by four points, and then your biggest rival of the season, you take them to overtime, uh, a team that's only lost one game so far this year, and you lose that one in a tight contest as well by seven points. So you look at that, 
that tells you that this is a team that isn't going to get blown off the field. Now, Benjamin Russell's the kind of team that can come out and physically just kind of wear you down, uh, but this is a Pelham team that is going to answer that. This is a team that's very athletic. They've got a lot of physicality uh, and a team that's pretty consistent on both sides of the ball. They haven't been dominant on defense, even though they've got a lot of talent there, and they haven't been dominant on offense, but you've seen progression on both sides of the ball uh, since the start of the season, particularly on the offensive side and how much they've grown on that side. You've got a lot of athletes over there playing on that side of the ball, but Clayton Maines, the quarterback, has drastically improved throughout the season, can run the football extremely well, and has really shown a lot of promise with his arm as well as a left-handed quarterback there for the Panthers. They're scoring 25.3 points per game. They're giving up 23.7 points per game, so very consistent on both sides of the ball. The offense not lighting up the scoreboard, but they're playing consistently, uh, and they're starting to show a lot more promise on that side of the ball. Look at this game on paper. Benjamin Russell should be the favorite uh, coming into this matchup, just judging by what we've seen so far this season. Obviously, the way the defense is playing, uh, giving up 14.3 points per game so far. It's about 10 points less than what Pelham's giving up, and they're scoring about 10 uh, 10 points more per game than what Pelham's scoring. But that doesn't take into account the scrappiness uh, of this Pelham team. This is a team that's going to come out, they're going to give it their all, and they're going to be in this football game. Simply put, if they have a good week of preparation, they're ready to roll come Thursday night. Uh, I think that's a benefit to them playing a day early. They've had some emotional games the last several weeks the Pelham Panthers have, but I think that's a benefit for them. I think they're going to be ready to roll. I think you're going to see another team, another game where this team continues to fight until the end of this football game. It's hard to see them not competing in this game, just judging by what we've seen from them so far this season, plus the added factor of knowing how important this game can be when it comes down to their chances of possibly a region championship, home field advantage in the first round of the playoffs, or at least getting into the postseason in a very wide open and crowded Class 6A Region 3. So an important game for the Pelham Panthers, and just judging by what we've seen so far, hard to see them not competing in what should be a very entertaining game here on Thursday night from Pelham High School. When you look at this matchup between Thompson and Oak Mountain, you've got two teams that have gone in completely opposite directions since the start of the year. The Thompson Warriors taking on two of the best teams in the country to start the season. We obviously know what happened with them starting 0-2 as the three-time defending state champs. But guess what? They've bounced back in a big way. They've won five games in a row now, sitting uh, in great shape in region play at 5-0 and with those five consecutive wins, uh, or 4-0 and in region play uh, with four of those games being region games. Another one, uh, a tight and exciting win against defending 6A state champ Clay Chalkville, uh, which really kind of showed you what this Thompson team's made of because many expected uh, that Clay team to be the best in the state regardless of classification this year. So a huge win there. They've won five in a row. They're clicking on all cylinders right now, but particularly on the defensive side of the football. That's where they've shined and been most consistent so far this season. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second, but you flip over to the other side of this game in the Oak Mountain Eagles. They started 2-0 and uh, and looked to be in pretty good shape. Defense was playing good. Offense was doing enough with a young quarterback and some young playmakers there on that side of the ball. Since then, they've lost five in a row. So they're sitting at two and five overall, have yet to win a region game. Thompson sitting at five and two overall and is undefeated in region play. So you look at that and you take into account what that means going into this game, and it means that Oak Mountain's going to have to really play a perfect game to be able to walk away victorious, whereas Thompson's going to have to come out, continue to play solid defensively. And I think that's ultimately where you're going to have the biggest difference in this football game. You look at what Oak Mountain's done on the offensive side of the football, they're scoring 15.7 points per game, and now they're about to go up against a defense that's given up 14 or less in every game so far. True points on the defensive side of the football this season. They're averaging giving up 17 points per game. That number's a little bit fluctuated because of those first two games where the offense had a couple of pick sixes, there was a kick return for a touchdown, and so forth. Uh, But ultimately, this Thompson defense giving up 14 or less in every game 
when they're on the football field. So one of the best in the state, as we expected coming into the season, and Oak Mountain's offense just struggling a little bit too much at this point in the season, scoring just 15.7 points per game. This is where the defense is going to have to come out for the Eagles and play well. We've seen them at times this season show that capability. Uh, that was expected to be the highlight of this team, especially needed to see it from the defensive line coming into the season. It looked like it was there in those first couple of games. We saw some promise at different times, but it just hasn't been consistent. If you want a chance to compete in this one, it's going to have to start on the defensive side of the football. You know Thompson's defense is going to be ready to go, which means your offense is going to have a tough time scoring a lot of points. It would be good to get into the 20s, uh, but the ultimate reality is Thompson's been holding just about every team to 14 or less. So uh, and that includes some of the best teams in the state. So where do you find those points? It's tough to see them getting into the 20s, which means your defense is going to have to step up and be ready to go for a physical battle uh, because the weakness of Thompson so far has been consistency on the offensive side of the football. They've been great at times. They've been a little bit less than stellar at times so far this season, but it's a group of guys that's starting to gain that experience. They've got a lot of athleticism, a lot of talent, on that side of the football. So eventually they're going to put it all together and they're going to have that consistent effort on the offensive side of the football as well. So if you're Oak Mountain, your best chance is to come out, uh, show some different looks, create some chaos on the defensive side of the ball, force this into a lower scoring game, uh, and you've got to put together some long sustained drives on the offensive side that you're able to capitalize on. Uh, because ultimately if you can do that, you take time off the, uh, the clock, you put points on the board, you limit chances for Thompson to be able to pull away, and you make this game uh, a very tight one. That's got to be the key for the Eagles and the focus going into this one, but ultimately tough to see them having enough points. Going up against this Thompson defense that's just loaded with talent, some of the best talent not only in this state but across the country, I expect that to be the ultimate difference at the end of the night. It's all about gaining momentum in this matchup. You look at this one between Chelsea and Spain Park, going to take place at uh, Spain Park High School on Friday night. And these are two first-year head coaches, Tim Vakakis leading the Spain Park Jaguars, Todd Cassidy leading the Chelsea Hornets. They've seen some promise at times in their first year leading their squads, and now it's about being able to pick up a win, gain some momentum, and kind of piecing it all together the rest of the way. You're going to have opportunities to really showcase that at the end of the season, build some momentum going into the, uh, the next year, possibly sneak into the playoffs, both have an uphill climb there. Uh, with what we've seen from several other teams in Class 7A Region 3. But right now, you've got two teams that have shown some positive signs throughout the season. Now it's about piecing it together and really gaining some momentum. You look at them both sitting with one win so far this season. Chelsea at 1-6, and six, but three of their six losses so far this season have come by seven, uh, seven points or less. So this is a team that could very easily be sitting at 4-3. and three overall in the season versus sitting at one and six. So a team that's been right there on the verge throughout the season so far. Spain Park sitting at one and five, won their opener. They've now lost five games in a row coming into this one. And you look at the storyline, Chelsea really has shown promise on both sides of the ball, but they've never been consistent and pieced it all together week in, week out. Spain Park came into the season expecting a strong defense, and they've been drastically improved from what they were a season ago, but they're just not able to piece it together offensively. That's been the big struggle for them so far this season. So Chelsea played well at times on both sides. They've grown tremendously on the offensive side. They've got some talent on the defense. That was the close-knit group coming into the season, but both sides haven't put it together consistently on a week-in, week-out basis. As for the Jags, like we said, it's just really been that offensive struggle that we've seen so far this season, which has left the defense, which is talented, but they've been on the field way too much this year, and that's eventually worn them down in several games. They've competed against some very good football teams, had some chances there, and some difficult matchups. So that takes you into this matchup where you've got two teams that are looking to find that consistency, find that extra missing piece uh, on both sides of the ball. Uh, Spain Park, this is a team that had scored 14 or less in four of the first five games and 21 or less in every game through that point of the season. So a team that's trying to find that success on the offensive side of the ball, averaging 15.7 
per game, but the Jags defensively giving up 27.7 points per game on that side. So playing extremely well for how much they've been on the field. Chelsea also struggling offensively at times. They're scoring 16.4 points per game, giving up 31.7 points per game. So this is a team that we've seen some improvement from both of these teams on both sides of the ball. Now it's about piecing that together, finding that success, particularly on the offensive side, but you look on the other side of that, these are two teams that entered with defensive promise coming into the year. That was going to be the highlight for both of them. I think you're going to see a low-scoring game between these two teams, two defenses hungry to make a statement, Uh, and then at the end of the night it may be which one has had more success and which offense can find a way to really uh, put together a good game plan and wear down the opposing defense to really make some adjustments there going into the fourth quarter. But I expect you're going to see a tight battle just judging by what we've seen from these two teams so far. The way they played defensively, though, expect it to be a little bit lower scoring. It might get into the 20s, uh, but I don't see much separation either way because of some of those offensive struggles that we've seen so far this season. Both want to sustain long drives offensively as well. So probably going to be a tight game, little separation, lower scoring, which should create for a thriller there between these two teams, one of which going to walk away with their second win of the season at the end of the night. Well, this game has all of a sudden become one of the biggest games this week, particularly for the Calera Eagles, but really for both of these teams as the Briarwood Lions are going to host the Calera Eagles on Friday night and If either of these teams wants a shot at making the playoffs, it's going to start this week. The winner of this game is going to have a little bit better chance, but particularly Kalira. They've got to win this football game really to have a chance because they're one of those teams that only has two region games left so far this season and currently sitting at 1-3 and in region play. This would put them at 1-4 and with that one game left. So very, very important for the Eagles to be able to walk in and pick up a win, but that's going to be a difficult task. These are two teams that are motivated and hungry and determined because they know how important each game the rest of the way is going to be. And you look at Briarwood's schedule after this, they've got the difficult stretch uh, that we were talking about earlier uh, for the Pelham Panthers this week and next week. Well, Briarwood, after this week, they've got Ben Russell and Homewood to close out region play. Now, win both of those games, you're sitting in really good shape. You're going to make the playoffs, but it starts this week. you got to win this one to gain some momentum. If you lose, you still have a chance to get into the postseason, but that becomes more of an uphill battle, especially with those two difficult games left on the schedule. So for Briarwood, it's a difficult path the rest of the way. For Kalira, there's just not much time, and you've got to be ready to go this week in order to pick up a win in this one. You look at what happened last week. The Kalir Eagles, they lose 31-14 to to Pelham. Six turnovers in that game. That was really the difference playing from behind the majority of, night, of the night, and that's what led to a lot of those turnovers uh, and ultimately just cost them some opportunities, some chances uh, to make that a closer game when they were in scoring territory inside the red zone but just ultimately couldn't get it done against that Pelham defense who stepped up with big plays throughout that matchup. Uh, As for the Briarwood Lions a week ago, a team uh, that competed very well with the Helena Huskies, forced a 21-21 tie game going into the final quarter, but ultimately the defense just couldn't step up and make the plays it needed to. Helena scores early in the fourth quarter, takes a 28-21 lead, then kicks adds a field goal shortly after and wins that one 31-21. And uh, that's kind of been the question mark for Briarwood so far this season. It's really been on the defensive side of the football, especially later in games. They've been susceptible to giving up some big plays. The offense has been pretty consistent, but is lacking a run game right now. The offensive line's uh, been a little bit inconsistent at times. What we've seen, though, is Christopher Vizina makes some incredible throws. His receivers really are playing a little bit better. They had one crucial drop last week late in that game, but overall, Cooper Higgins stepping up, playing some good football. Brady Wallace playing some great football, and they've got some others as well that are stepping up and making some big plays. They've just got to have that confidence that they're going to go out and make catches. If they drop one, they've got to know that their quarterback's going to put it on the spot the next time around. you got to go out and be confident there 
on the offensive side of the football. So if you can do that, that's a huge benefit for this Briarwood offense, but the defense really has to play more consistent the rest of the way. You look at this Briarwood defense giving up 29.7 points per game, traditionally a team that's giving up less than 20 points per game. Now they're close to the 30-point-per-game mark, so that's where they're going to have to show some improvement the rest of the way, really setting a physical uh, physical tone throughout these football games. And that's going to have to start this week against a clear team that struggled somewhat on the offensive side of the football, scoring just 19.3 points per game. So if you're Briarwood's defense, you got to be ready for that, ready to capitalize and take advantage. Uh, but at the same time, this is a clear offense. They've got some talent out there. Daniel Brown has played extremely well. He's a veteran guy with some experience. Braylon Farrington, one of the fastest guys on the football field, a very talented wide receiver uh, who's really one of the more underrated guys in the state at the receiver position. Um, and then Preston Stokes, he's been inconsistent at times so far this season, but he's a quarterback that started last year. He's starting again this year, so he's got the experience. And the offensive line, similar situation. Some guys that uh, are in that lineup this year that have some experience, others that are back after being injured last year. They've been inconsistent at times as well, but they've got that experience. So it's a clear offense that's been hot and cold so far this season. Ultimately, last week, they fell flat again in that 31-14 to loss to Pelham. But the two weeks before that, they scored 38 in back-to-back -back games against uh, some good competition. Uh, so you look at that and see how successful they can be on that side of the ball. And then same story for them. The defense has been inconsistent at times this year, giving up 22.7 points per game. This is a very talented defensive football team that, again, last week forced turnovers, gave the offense some chances. They played well a week ago, but ultimately give up 31 points in that loss to Pelham. So now it's about the defense really continuing to play well. They've done a good job for the majority of the season, just hasn't been consistent on that side of the ball. And honestly, I think whichever defense shows up with the better game plan, ready to roll, is the one that's going to win this football game. Uh, you look at the, the offense for both sides, Briarwood's going to have a little bit more of an advantage when you look at Vizina and what he's able to do with his legs and his arm. Uh, but ultimately, this is a clear team that can be explosive. They've got a ton of athletes. They're going to be able to make plays as well. So uh, whichever defense decides to show up, play their best game, uh, so far of the season, that's probably the one that's going to walk away with the victory in this one. I, both these teams, super talented, just a matter of putting it together uh, on this night. And I think that's going to be the ultimate key, whichever is more collectively together going into this game uh, and feels more confident, probably going to be the one that walks away with the victory. So uh, it's a huge one. It's a big, big game. Clear, like I said, they've got to win this football game, but ultimately huge for both of these teams with playoff implications on the line. Got to win this one to really have a chance to get in as that three or four seed out of what's really become the most exciting region in the state to me this year because of how much is still left to be determined and the talent and where we are just location-wise, not only in Shelby County, but the Birmingham metro area. Uh, just a lot left to fight for between some really good football teams. These two, no exception to that. They know what's on the line. They're going to be ready to go. You've got two great head coaches in Jason Hamlin and Matthew Forrester, and I think you're going to see them pull out all the stops in this matchup. It's going to lead to an exciting battle between Kalir and Briarwood out at Briarwood Christian School. Well, the Shelby County Wildcats, they've played their two most difficult games of the season now. They lose to Moody, the number four. Well, probably going to move up this week, but been in the top five so far this season uh, for a consistent stretch. Now probably going to move up and be inside the top three after the latest rankings come out. So one of the best teams in the 5A classification this year. Uh, obviously, Shelby County struggled in that one. And then last week, they fall to Demopolis, and they've given up 47 or, and 48 points each of the last two games now against Moody and Demopolis. And so you look at that the rest of the way. They've got some big-time games, and that starts with a road trip to Selma this Friday night. Uh, this is a Shelby County team now that's lost two in a row, three of the last four, sitting at 3-3 three and three overall and 1-2 and two in region play with two region games left. So really need to have this game. They need to win this game to have a good shot at getting into the playoffs. Even if they lose, still an outside shot, even with that one win going into their final region game, still an outside shot 
uh, that they'll get into the playoffs with a win in that final region game, but really need to win this game against Selma. Uh, and it's going to be a difficult one. You look at the Wildcats and the momentum factor, started the season 3-1, and one, uh, but now they've gone 1-3 and three in the last four, whereas Selma's kind of been in the opposite situation, a team that started 1-2, and two, but now they've won four games in a row in five of their last six to get to 5-2 and two overall, 2-1 and one in region play. So that puts you in a situation where if you're able to win this game and you're Shelby County, you've got that tiebreaker advantage sitting there. So that would be a huge bonus uh, to walk away with a victory in this game when it comes to getting in to the playoffs. Uh, so you look at that and this team's got to be ready to go, motivated, have a good week of focus preparation going into this matchup on the road uh, because this is a Selma team that's playing some good football so far this season, particularly on the defensive side of the football, and that's got to be your big worry going into this game because of what we've seen uh, from Shelby County on the offensive side of the football and the struggles that they've really had there so far this season. Selma, like I said, giving up 13.1 points per game on the defensive side, whereas Shelby County scoring just 12.8 points per game so far this season. They've scored 23 or less in every game and 14 or less in four of six so far. So the offense just trying to find a rhythm there on that side of the ball. The defense for the Wildcats has played pretty good so far this season, giving up 24.7 points per game. If you look at where this team was on that side a few years ago, drastically improved last year and this year. A very physical group that's ready to get after it week in and week out, but the offense just not able to put together any consistency so far this season. Um, that's going to be the challenging part for Shelby County going into this game uh, and, and ultimately could make the difference. I do think that Shelby County's defense, the way they've played so far this season, could keep this game tight. That's got to be key, but the offense has got to come out determined. The offensive line's a huge key in making that happen. They've got to come out ready to block, ready to push the uh, the def defensive line of Selma backwards, create some holes, uh, and really open things up and give the offense, offense some confidence early in this game to be able to have a chance to walk away with a victory. That's the ultimate key for Shelby County, in my opinion. Defense has got to play well. That's a must. But the offensive line for this team to be able to score enough points against one of the best defenses they've seen so far, going to have to find a way to really kickstart that momentum on the offensive side of the ball. Ultimately, if that happens, the defense plays well, going to have a shot to pick up a crucial region win. Montevallo's offense just it continues to be the story, continue to struggle on that side of the ball. This is a team now that's sitting at 2-4 and four overall. They've lost three in a row, and they sit at 2-2 two and two in region play. Now that last number is the key. A team sitting at 2-2 two and two in region play, still a chance to get into the playoffs, but they've almost been put into a position where they're at least going to have to win two of the next three, if not win out. Um, and you've got a difficult challenge ahead. You've got Bibb County this week back home for the first time in a while, which is a benefit, but you've got one of the best teams in the region. Then you get a game that you should win the week after, uh, but is that going to be enough to get you into the playoffs? Still yet to be determined, and then you close out region play with your most difficult region game against American Christian. So for Montevallo, the focus has to be on improving on the offensive side of the ball. It's a team last week that was able to take a lead 14-10, to returned to the opening kick to the second half uh, to take the lead there, but ultimately gave up 23 unanswered the rest of the way, fall 33-14 to in that matchup. The offense only scoring seven points in that game, and that continues to be the storyline for the Bulldogs, scoring 16.5 points per game so far this season. The good thing is that matches what your defense is giving up. This defense playing extremely well so far this season as they're giving up 16.5 points per game on the defensive side as well. But the offense is going to have to find that extra gear the rest of the way. And now you get a Bibb County team that's sitting at 4-3 and three overall, but they're 3-1 and one in region play, which is the key there. And all three of their losses so far this season have come to really good football teams. It's a team scoring 35.9 points per game, and they're giving up 20.3 points per game uh, on the defensive side. So a very solid football team, maybe not as good as traditional Bibb County teams, but still a very good football team this year that's playing consistently and well 
on both sides of the football this season. Montevallo, they've played well defensively. Like I said, uh, they've given up 33 or less in every game. That one blemish last week where they gave up 33 uh, just really being on the field too much defensively was one of the keys there. They've given up 21 or less in all but that game a week ago to against Sipsy Valley. Uh, and so you look at that, this is a defense that can keep you in football games, going to come out, have to come out in this one and really be ready for a physical, exhausting battle. Uh, and that, that starts with mentally preparing yourself throughout this week going into that matchup and being ready for – that situation, not knowing if the offense is going to be ready to take that step on that side of the ball. It's an offense that scored 14 or less three weeks in a row and in four of the six weeks so far this season. Going to have to play better than that. I mean, there's no uh, easy way to say that, no other way to say it. You've got to play better than that on the offensive side against Bibb County if you want a chance to win this football game. Defense can keep you in this game, but ultimately they're going to wear down if they're having to play that much, especially with some guys playing both sides of the football. So the offense is going to have to click into a new gear this week for Montevallo to be able to pick up a win. If they can win this one, that's huge for momentum going into these final couple of weeks of region play, uh, particularly next week. That could give you a two-game winning streak going in to that matchup with American Christian. So it's going to be a tall task, a very good Bibb County football team. But if Montevallo can work on things and really take a step forward, mentally prepare themselves for a physical and exhausting battle throughout this week of practice, that's where the confidence starts. You go into that game prepared, ready to roll. That can ultimately make the difference, give you a chance to pull off a huge win in this region. So we'll see if they're able to put it all together going into that matchup, how it unfolds on the football field Friday night. But really an important game, even if they don't have the success to win, to at least show some confidence and growth on the offensive side of the football because the pieces are there. They've got some guys, they've got some talent, some athleticism. So it's just about... Uh, really finding things, piecing together those explosive big-time plays that can ultimately make a difference. And that all comes down to balance and guys stepping up, especially in the trenches, to make a difference in this matchup. I think it could be a little bit uh, of a sneaky good game. Maybe not a lot of people put a lot of emphasis or focus or think Montevallo is going to have a chance in this one. But I think that defense is good enough to make this an entertaining one. And you know that the offense is motivated. They want to have that success. So uh, there's going to be a lot of a drive this week to help them have one of their best games and, and really one of their toughest opponents. There shouldn't be any need for any outside urgency to get ready for this one. I'm sure they know, and they're going to hear about that all week at practice. So we'll see if they can piece it together, have that opportunity on Friday night to pull off a huge region win against Bibb County. The historic season continued for the Vincent Yellow Jackets this past Friday night as they pull off a big comeback win against Ramburn, a game that they trailed uh, 21 to 18 at the half, but no worries. They came out and dominated the rest of the way, uh, going on to win 54 to 21. They outscored Ramburn 36 to nothing in the second half, and that just came down to focus early. That was a team that probably expected to come out. The success they've seen so far this season kind of cakewalk through that game. Uh, and then they saw that they weren't playing their best. They made some mistakes, and they got into halftime, and they woke up real fast. That team came out and looked more like the team that we've seen be dominant for the majority of the season. Ended that game like we expected them to. We expected them to pull away, win that game going away. And that's exactly what they did even after that slow start in the first half. So now they sit at 6-1 and one overall, 3-1 and one in region play. Offense playing well, give, or scoring 49.4 points per game. Defense playing extremely well, giving up 13.7 points per game. And they've scored 41 or more points in all but a 36-35 to 35 loss to B.B. Comer. Both those teams sitting inside the top 10 of the region standings. And now you go into a road trip to Woodland, another one, another easy game that you could kind of think you're going to sleepwalk through but can't have that happen and have a blemish on your record at this point because this is really the last one uh, that you could get caught looking ahead in. Uh, the rest of the way, they've got some challenges. They've got Isabella and Thorsby both on the schedule still. Both of those teams still fighting for the region championship in this region. They sit along with B.B. Comer and Vincent all uh, four of those teams going to be the ones that get into the playoffs and all sit with one region loss right now. So a lot still left 
uh, up in the air at this point. Uh, B.B. Comer sitting in the driver's seat uh, in region play at this point in time, but two huge weeks after this. So you can't get caught looking ahead if you're the Vincent Yellow Jackets, uh, but I think that they're going to be able to pick up a win. Just like we said last week, uh, all it takes is to keep your focus, be ready to go, have a good game plan, and then come out uh, and capitalize. And you look at the way that this Woodland team is playing so far uh, this season. It's a team that uh, has struggled at times, to be honest with you. Uh, it's a team that's scoring nine points per game, giving up 37.2 points per game. Um, they did just pick up their first win of the season, 39-26 to against Central Coosa last week, but that's a tight game, 13-point win uh, against a Central Coosa team that get this Vincent beat 65 to nothing earlier this year. So you look at that, Vincent should be the heavy favorite going into this matchup, and the way that this defense is played, the way that the offense is played, a lot of guys playing both sides, it really doesn't seem to matter. They're a well-conditioned team. They're a team that's confident, uh, and they're ready to compete for at least one of those top two spots in region play, continue a historic stretch, going to keep their confidence this week going into that last two weeks of region play and a difficult stretch there in those two games. I think that they come out this week determined, focused, ready to keep their momentum alive. I don't expect a step a setback this week, uh, and I expect them to continue that historic season rolling right along. That takes us into the AISA and ACSC, although I say that, and we've got the Evangel Lightning on a bye this week in the ACSC, a team that just continues to dominate a big win against Ezekiel, their rival, this past week. Uh, just a dominant group so far, the favorite to win the ACSC state championship and arguably the best team in the country looking to win another national championship in eight-man play. Uh, beyond them, we do have our two AISA schools in action this week. We start with Cornerstone as they host Trinity, and Cornerstone coming off their second straight loss after that undefeated start to the season. And it's really been about defense the last three weeks of the season. They won one in a tight battle a couple weeks ago, 52-50, to but they've given up 50, 48, and 56 in the last three games. It's cost them the last couple of weeks, a 52-48 to loss two weeks ago to North River, and then last week they lose 56-40 to to Southern Prep. So now sitting at 3-2 and two after that 3-0 and start to the season. And this is a team in Trinity uh, that's been – you know, they haven't had the most successful season so far, sitting at one and four. But you look at that one win so far this season. Uh, it's it's a game that they won 50 to eight against North River, and that's a team that Cornerstone just lost to a couple weeks ago, 52 to 48. So hard to tell what that actually means going into this game because uh, we've seen struggles from Trinity so far this season, sitting at one and four. But ultimately, that tells me they're going to at least be able to compete and score points going into this matchup. Scored 50 against North River, uh, and that's a team that Cornerstone struggled uh, to shut down offensively. So I think Trinity going to be able to score points in this one unless Cornerstone comes out and makes the statement and the determination that their defense is going to be play better football. Uh, and that's what it comes down to. Got to play better on the defensive side of the football because Cornerstone's offense is playing extremely well. It's a team – that's scoring 40 or more most weeks of the season, that's going to continue. I think they've got a lot of talent, young talent on that side of the ball. They're going to continue to score points, but ultimately that defense is going to have to play better for them to have a chance uh, to compete for an eight-man state championship in the AISA, uh, and that's going to start this week. Got to be able to pick up a big win, and you've got to use your defense to be able to do so in that one. As for the Coosa Valley Rebels, started 0-6 this season, grabbed their first win of the season Last week, they still still struggled offensively, scored just 14 points. Seventh straight game to kick off the season that they've scored 14 or less. That said, they picked up their first win of the year in a 14-12 to win against Evangel out of Montgomery. Uh, so they get that win. They're now 1-6 overall in the season. But this week, they get a very difficult matchup against Crenshaw, uh, a team that's sitting at 4-2 and two overall, scoring 37.7 points per game on the season. Uh, so that offense is playing well. Their blemish right now is on the defensive side of the football where they're giving up 28.7 points per game. So Coosa Valley going to have to capitalize that on an offense for the Rebels that's scoring 6.4 points per game. 
going to have to be able to capitalize against a defense that's been susceptible at times. Ultimately, if the Rebels want to win, going to have to play well offensively this week. You look at their defense, they've played extremely well, giving up 27.3 points per game on that side of the ball. That's been the highlight of uh, for them most of the year, but that doesn't really go in line with the weakness of uh, Crenshaw. Uh, the offense playing well, they're going to be able to score points even with the success of Coosa Valley's defense. The question is how many points and can Coosa Valley match it on the offensive side themselves. Probably going to have to score more than 14 in this one, get into the 20s. We'll see if they can do that for the first time uh, this season. I do think we're seeing growth, a little bit more consistency on that side of the ball, but going to have to have one of their better games of the year on offense this week to be able to walk away with a victory. That takes us to our SCR Stars of the Week segment. Plenty of stars to hand out from a very exciting week of football last week, and we start with none other than Anquan Fagans with the Thompson Warriors. Obviously won that game for them. Uh, you look at the difference in that game, and it was him on the defensive side of the football. Two interceptions, one a pick six, ultimately in a 14-12 uh, win. Don't get that pick six, then you lose 12-7. to The other 14-12, to they're up in the final minutes, and he picks off the two-point conversion attempt that would have tied the game and at least forced overtime, if not led to a loss. So two game-changing interceptions from Fagans also led the team with five tackles in that game. Really the overall SCR star of the week if we gave that out, something we're going to look into going into next year in addition to naming all the rest of the stars. But he was lights out, played an incredible football game, been dominant on the defensive side of the football, and he's one of many for the Warriors on that side that continues to play extremely well. Peter Woods had three tackles for loss, a sack, and five total tackles a week ago. Uh, Seth Hampton, seven tackles, uh, and Jake Ivey, six tackles as well, those all including assisted tackles in there as well. So playing some great football on the defensive side of the football. Then you switch over to the offensive side. One of the most underrated players at the running back position in the state, A.J. Green, 175 yards on 15 carries, just continues to be one of the best running backs in the state, consistently over 100 yards and kind of carrying the offense this year. Typically, the last several years, it's been a, a couple of quarterbacks, a couple of receivers. This year, it's A.J. Green because they've been a little bit more inconsistent in the passing game. Going to continue to need him to step up with some big-time games coming up to end region play, obviously still still the bout with uh, Tuscaloosa County and then Hoover at the end of region play beyond that going into the playoffs as well. That takes us to Garrett Murphy, another guy who's been tremendous so far this season. Uh, this past week, eight and a half tackles, two tackles for loss, had two interceptions. One was a pick six uh, that was ultimately called back. The other he fumbled on, but you can't ask for the guy to do much more than pick off two passes uh, and have eight and a half tackles, including two for a loss. So a tremendous game from him. Very physical, athletic presence. Also handles the kicking duties there for the Eagles. Uh, and so just an all-around great athlete there for the Oak Mountain Eagles. That takes us to 6A classification, where the Helena Huskies, a big win against Briarwood last week, 31-21. to And you look at what Jordan Washington was able to do. All four of his team's touchdowns in that game, uh, ultimately, a field goal added on at the end as well for the Huskies, but he had all four touchdowns, 150 yards on the ground, and a 32-yard reception. So just continuing to do everything he can. Only played in four games so far this season uh, due to being out a couple weeks, but he's jumped right back in, not skipping a beat there for the Huskies offense. And Dalton Llewellyn continuing to improve at the quarterback position, 200 all-purpose yards for the Huskies a week ago. A huge run late in that game that ultimately made a difference as well as Helena is able to pick up that win. And he was able to trust his receivers as well. Uh, Torrey Ward made some huge clutch grabs there late in that game, most of them in double coverage and all of them for big first downs as he finished with more than 50 yards receiving uh, with some very, very crucial catches to continue to move the chains there for the Huskies and help them pick up the win. That brings us to some of the athletes right here at Pelham High School. 
and the Panthers and their success that they had in a 31 to 14 win against Calera. The defense got to start with them. Six forced turnovers in that game to pick up the win ultimately made the difference. Jamal Miles, a big reason why, had two of those interceptions for the Panthers down the stretch in what was a very tight football game. Had they not gotten those turnovers, could have turned out a little bit differently. So a big time performance from Jamal Miles from the entire Pelham defense there against Calera. On the other side of the ball, you look at Clayton Maines, continues to play some good football, ran for two touchdowns, threw for two touchdowns, totaled 80 rushing yards and 133 passing yards, so more than 200 all-purpose yards and four touchdowns, all four of his team's uh, touchdowns in that win against Calera. And Trey Corkill continuing to step up as an added presence there at an already very deep receiver position. He had two touchdown catches in that win as well, so continues to play well for the Panthers, and that takes us down to the Vincent Yellow Jackets. We mention most of these guys every week, but they just continue to put up unreal numbers. We start on the defensive side of the football. Zach Wright with 16 tackles, Trey Youngblood with 13 tackles, and you look at them balancing both sides of the football as well, but you go over to the offensive side, and uh, Zach Carlisle, Youngblood, Raquelis Robertson, Blake Ollams all scored all had big games in a 54-21 to win against Ramburn. So just impressive stuff from this Vincent football team that continues to score uh, at least more than 40, give up less than 20 just week in, week out. All those guys making big-time plays there for the Yellow Jackets. That's going to do it for this week's Shelby County High School football show. I appreciate all of you for tuning in. Uh, it's going to be an exciting week, and it kicks off Thursday night. I'll be out. Uh, of commission on Friday night out of town. So Lauren Sexton going to have all of our coverage on Friday night. I will, however, be able to cover some games on Thursday night. So we're going to have some good coverage from both of our games on Thursday, including our game of the week here between Pelham and Benjamin Russell, Thompson Oak Mountain out at Thompson High School and Warrior Stadium as well. So a big, big week of region play happening this week. Uh, little time left. We've only got a few weeks left in the region uh, in region play, three to be exact, four left in the regular season. That's hard to believe. So uh, there's there's some, the time is here. All these teams looking to make statements. They've only got a few weeks to do so. Playoff spots up for grabs. Region championships still in the running. Uh, so plenty to settle, and we're going to start settling it on the football field these next few weeks, including with our game of the week here at Pelham on Thursday night. So going to be a busy, exciting week, but that's going to do it for this week's show. We'll see you later in the week. That's going to do it from right here at Pelham High School.